In today's episode of the Simulator series, we are going to be creating the main on-screen buttons. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox on my content. With that being said, let's get right into it. Now, one thing before we actually get into the episode, I recently began working with a UI artist to create original assets for a clicking simulator GUI. So, for example, you can see inside of Studio right now, we actually have a bunch of buttons on the left-hand side of our screen created, and all those assets were created by this one specific GUI artist. Now, in the future, we will expand on that, and we will get more custom icons for example we'll replace the click icon that's in place of our click button and also our click currency as well we'll also replace the diamond icon with another custom icon as well but the reason i'm telling you this is because you can actually access all these icons for free there will be a link down below in the description to my patreon and this patreon post is for completely free everybody can access this and we'll continue updating this specific post with all the icons and assets that we add to our game so huge shout out to victor for creating all these assets for us like i said they're completely free to use you can use them in your own game and you don't even need to give us credit or anything else like that. They're completely public domain and free to use for everybody. If you're unsure of how to access them, all you have to do is click on this attachment right here. Then you'll see a pop-up for where you want to save the zip file. Save it wherever you want to. Open up that folder and make sure you click on extract files. And if you go inside of the folder, you can see all the assets which are currently included. Now that we're in studio, the first thing you want to do is go up to view and click on asset manager. And inside of here, you're going to see this little icon that says bulk import. Click on that. Then go to the folder which has all the assets you just downloaded inside of it. Highlight all of those assets and click on open. Now what this will do is upload all those assets directly to our game so that they're much easier to use and we don't have to upload them each individually. Now yours probably won't have the asset renamed to whatever. The reason that mine displays that is because I've actually already added these assets to our game. So Roblox basically renames them because they seem to be a duplicate of them. Now that we have those uploaded, we can actually exit out of our asset manager and we're all good. Now normally how I create my GUIs is usually by creating a brand new screen GUI object, renaming it to whatever we're specifically creating. And we kind of use the screen GUIs as a grouping. For instance, we have the currency GUI right here which holds all of our currency displays so you would think that for the buns gui we would create a brand new screen gui rename that to buns create a frame inside of there and start adding the rest of the gui objects to that now just to visually show you exactly what i mean what i did is i created a brand new screen gui inside of here and i added a buns frame and inside of there i added a bunch of different buns and everything else like that but basically inside of here we have a ui aspect ratio constraint and the same goes for inside of the frame inside of our currency gui as well that also has ui aspect ratio constraint and we use ui aspect ratio constraints to keep the UI compatible with other devices. The thing is though, is that we actually run into an issue when we're using the aspect ratio constraints and grouping the GUI objects in different screen GUIs. So for instance, if we click on test and look from a different view, we can see that the buns are actually positioned horribly and not how we wanted them to be positioned at all. But we can see that if we swap back to our normal view, they're positioned perfectly. Now, after doing a lot of research and trying to figure out if there's any solution to this, I was unable to find any solution of basically keeping the UI groups how we currently have them in multiple different screen GUIs. So what we need to do is we basically need to create one screen GUI object and then combine the buttons frame and the currency frame inside of that one screen GUI to make them work together and to keep the positioning, the sizing, and everything else like that all good. So that's what we're going to do and that's why we're doing it. Anyways, I'm going to delete the button screen GUI. That was just to visualize the problem that we're running into and why we're doing what we're doing. So what we're going to do is inside of the star GUI, we'll add a brand new screen GUI object and we'll rename this to left and this is going to hold the currency and the buns GUI objects. Now for the properties, we want to ignore the GUI inset. We want to set reset on spawn to false and then we also want to set the z index behavior to global then we want to insert a frame directly inside of the gui for the size of the frame we want to set the x scale to 0.175 comma zero and for the y scale we want to set that to 0 0.365 comma zero just like that then for the positioning for the anchor point y we want to set that to 0.5 and then for the positions y scaled we want to set that to 0.5 as well so it appears in the middle of the screen additionally for the scaled x position we want to move it slightly over to the right just so that it's not touching the left side of the screen so we're going to set this to 0 0.005 and now we can see there's a slight little space in between this frame and the left side of our screen next inside of this frame we want to add an aspect ratio constraint and we'll set the aspect ratio to 0 0.837 just like that now what we can do is actually get the frame that's inside of our currency gui and drag it directly into this frame right here and we'll also rename this to currency then we want to play with the sizing a little bit but before we can do that we actually have to delete the ui aspect ratio inside of there and then we can adjust the sizing so for the x scale this is actually going to be set to one because we want it to be the the entire width of this frame and then for the y scale we're going to set that to like 0.4 for right now now that we've done that we can close that currency frame and we're going to create a brand new frame inside of here and we'll rename this to buttons now for the sizing of this we're going to make it one for the x scaled and for the y we're going to set that to 0.56 just like that now another thing that we want to add inside of the main frame is a ui list layout so that we can position these two frames nicely now for the ui 
wireless layout, we want the vertical alignment to be centered as well as the horizontal alignment centered as well. And then we want the currency to appear below the buttons. So we're going to set the layout order to one for the currency. And now that will appear below the buttons. Now inside of the buttons frame, we want to add a UI grid layout to this. And then we also want to add an image button inside of here as well. We're going to rename the image button from image button to shop. And now we can start messing around with the UI grid layout. So for our buttons, we want to have three buttons per row and we want to have two rows. So for the cell size, the X scaled, we want that to be about 0.3 because that'll allow for three objects to be in the same row. And then for the Y, we're going to put that to 0.5 because we want there to be two rows. Additionally, for the horizontal alignment, we can set that to centered. And then for the vertical alignment, we can set that to centered as well because this will be completely filled with six different buttons. Let's go ahead and duplicate this image button and we'll do that about six times. And now that we've done that, we can see how all six buttons would look. So we want to adjust the padding on the UI grid layout. So for the padding, we're going to set that to 0.01, 0, 0, 0, 0.01, 0, just like that. So now there's a small padding inside of there. Anyway, going back to the image button, let's actually set the image of this image button. Now the image that we want to set it to is either the menu button background red or the menu button background black. Since this is a shop button, we're going to select the red background just like that. And then also for the scale type, we need to make sure to set that to fit so that the image doesn't look like it's stretched out. Additionally, we want to set the background transparency of the button to one so that we don't see any background. Then inside of the button, we want to add a new image label. We'll rename this image label to icon. And then for the sizing, we're going to set it to 0 0.8 comma 0 comma 0 0.6 comma 0. And then for the positioning, we want it to be centered. So we're going to say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0, just like that. And we actually want it to appear a little bit higher than just being centered. So we're going to set the position to 0.4 so that it goes up a little bit. And that actually looks perfect. Then for the icon, we're going to set the image of this to the shop icon. And then we'll make sure that we set the background transparency to one. And I don't know why Roblox Studio is so buggy, but for some reason, when you search for an icon, it actually might not be the right icon. So if you're like having an issue like that, that's why Roblox is just a little bit buggy. Anyway, we can now see that the icon is appearing there, which is perfect. We then want to add a text label to the shop button as well. And we'll rename this to title. Then we're going to set the text to shop. We're also going to set the text color to white. We'll also make sure that it's scaled. For the font, we're going to go with Gotham and we're going to make that bold. Then for the background transparency, we'll set that to one. For the size, we're going to set that to one comma zero comma point two comma zero. We'll see how that looks. And then for the positioning, we are just going to set the Y to point seventy five just like that. And now that we have that, that actually looks pretty good to me. I think what we might do is increase the cell size just a little bit. So like point three two. And now that makes it a little bit larger. Now let's duplicate that three times, make sure that they can all fit on one row, which they can. We'll duplicate that three more times. And now that actually looks pretty good right there. I like the padding. I like the sizing. I think the text looks good. I think the icon looks good for the positioning and everything else like that. So I think that's pretty good. One more thing that we want to do is duplicate the icon right here. And we're going to rename this to notification. And then we're also going to modify the image of this. And we're going to set it to this image right here. Now for the sizing of this, we want it to be pretty small. So we're going to set it to like 0 0.325, 0, 0, 0.285, 0. So something like that. Now for the positioning, we basically want it to appear at the top right hand corner of the button every single time. So we're going to set the anchor points to 0, 0. And then for the position, we're going to set the X to 0. 0.8. And then for the Y, we actually have to use negative because we want it to appear a little bit higher up on the button as well. And we're going to set that to negative 0. 0.1. So just like that. And now we can see it does appear at the top right hand corner of the button. So that button looks pretty good. We're actually going to set the notification image label to not visible because we don't always want to see that and we don't want to see it by default. Then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and we're going to rename this to rewards. Now, the first thing that we want to do is adjust the layout order to one so that we make sure that this always appears in the correct order, which should be after shop. Then for the image, we want to make sure that we set this to the menu button background black because it's not supposed to be red. For the title, we are going to change the text to rewards. For the icon, we're going to select the trophy icon. And there we go. We just created our second button. So we'll duplicate this button again. We'll rename this from rewards to pets. We'll update the layout order to be number two. We'll update the title text to say pets. Then we'll update the icon to have the pet Paul just like that. And there we go. We've just created the third button. So now we basically just have to do this for the last three as well. So we'll duplicate this, rename it to menu, adjust the layout order, update the title to say menu and update the icon as well. Then for trade, update the text to say trade and update the icon as well. Now, actually one thing that I forgot with all of these images, unfortunately, is to actually set the scale type. Usually when you're creating images, you don't actually want the scale type to be stretched. Otherwise the images will look stretched. You usually want it to be fit so that the images don't look stretched and they actually look how they should. So by doing that, you can see that the images 
change just a little bit, but it does definitely make them look a little bit better. And now for the last one, we are going to duplicate trade. We'll rename this to rebirths. We'll also update the layout order. So this is going to be number four. And I think we actually might have messed the order up a little bit, or I could be wrong, but still it's working perfectly fine. We'll then update the icon. And for the title, we want it to say rebirths just like that. Okay. So now that we have all those buns created, we can actually close that frame. We're actually going to set the background transparency of that to one so that we don't see the background. We'll also do that for the main frame as well. So background transparency one. And now if you look at the frames, they actually look a little bit too close together. So what we can do is modify the UI list layout and we just have to add a slight padding to this. So we're going to say 0.1 and see how they look. Now that's a little bit too far. So we could try 0.05. That's still too far. I think 0.01. Now there's a little space between them and I think that actually looks pretty perfect. Also, if we go to test and look on a different device, we can see how they look and they actually all look pretty perfect. So now that we have the GUI pretty much finished, if we look inside of the currency GUI, we can see that we have a local script named manager right here and this script will not actually work anymore. Now that's fine because we're actually going to start scripting our GUIs a little bit differently. And the way that we're going to do that is by going into the starter player, into the starter player script, and we're going to create a brand new folder inside of here and we're going to rename that to GUI. Then what we can do is drag the manager script directly into that folder right there and rename it to currency. Then we'll open up that script. And also we can delete the currency GUI as well. Now inside of the script, we actually have to get the player service. Now that we have the player service, we're going to go ahead and create a variable for the player. And that's going to be equal to players.local player. And now we need to create a variable for the player's player GUI. So we're going to say local player GUI equals player dot player GUI. Now you might be confused as to why we're not going and trying to access the starter GUI. And I'll actually show that to you. When you start up your game, if you look under the players tab and click on your actual player, you can see that there is a folder inside of here named player GUI. Now how the player GUI works is it's basically a duplicate of the starter GUI, but every single player object has their own player GUI, which like I said, is a duplicate of the starter GUI. So now if we access the starter GUI from a player's local script, that won't actually affect any of the GUIs that we will see on screen. We actually have to modify the player GUI because this holds all of our current GUIs itself. Now that we have the player GUI, we actually have to update the GUI variable right here. And we're going to say player GUI, wait for child, and now the name of the screen GUI. And it's going to be called left because we just created that screen GUI. And then for the frame, we're going to say GUI.frame.currency. And now we have the currency frame just like that. So now if we save the script and start up our game, we can test this out and we can actually see that the amount has been updated. But if we start clicking and stuff like that, we can see that that GUI is now working. It's being updated and it's all good. Now, another thing that I want to show during this video is basically how to create hover effects for these buns. Because usually when you hover over a bun, something about the bun changes. Maybe it gets a little bit darker or something like that to show that you're hovering over it. But when we hover over these image buns, nothing actually changes. So let's make them change. Now to give you guys a quick example of what our hover effect is going to look like, basically whenever we hover over a bun, the background's actually going to change the white. And then the icon itself is basically going to change to the color of the background originally. And then when you unhover, it'll basically reset. Now we're going to do it for all the buns, except for the shop bun, just because the shop bun is a completely different background color and the icon itself isn't white either. So you probably could even skip this for rewards as well, but it's really whatever you guys want to do. I'm just kind of showcasing how you can do this. And then you guys can choose what you want to actually do with it. What we're actually going to do is go inside of the starter player scripts inside of that GUI folder. And we're actually going to duplicate the currency script that we have right there. And we're going to rename that to buns. Now inside of the script, we actually don't need most of these variables. So we can delete those two. We can also delete all of these and we can really just delete everything below that basically. So we can get rid of the replicated storage as well. And now we're just left with this. We're going to actually update the frame. So instead of saying it's the currency frame, we're going to go to the buttons frame. And now we want to create a couple of static variables. So we're going to say local hovered icon color equals. We basically want to create a brand new color three from RGB. And now we want to basically get the background color of the bun. So we can click pick screen color. We can hit okay. And now we can see that this is the RGB numbers right here. So now we can grab those, put those inside of our script right here, just like that. And we're going to duplicate that variable and we'll rename it from hovered icon color to default icon color. And that's just going to be equal to white. So we're just going to say 255, 255, 255, just like that. Next, we want to create variables for the hovered icon image. So we're going to say hovered icon image. And that's actually going to be equal to a string. Now, if we go inside of view, inside of the asset manager, we can see that we actually have three different background colors here. We have the red, the black, and the white. We're actually going to use the white. So we want to copy the ID to clipboard. And we're actually going to use this as the hovered icon image. It should actually be called hovered icon image background or background image. I don't know, something like that. Either one works. And then we'll paste the image string into that as well. So then we'll duplicate that and rename that from hovered to default. And then we'll grab the black background ID and then paste that directly into here as well. So now that we have all those variables, what we actually want to do is we want to loop through all the children inside of the frame. So we're going to say for underscore child in 
frame get children do now we need to check if the child is a gui button we could also say image button but when we use gui button it'll work for both text buns and image buns so if the child is not a gui button or the child name is shop then we just want to continue and just like that so basically if it's not a gui button or if it's named shop then we don't want to do anything for it but if it's not either of those then we can continue now because of those if statements we've basically filtered down all the children to be any of the children that we actually have highlighted currently these are pretty much the only things that will come through in this loop after this if statement but the thing is is that if we say like child dot and try to index that we won't actually have any of the children or anything like that that we can index because we don't actually know that it's these specific image buttons so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a custom type and that's going to be called button instance and we're going to set that equal to the type of frame dot pets so the frame right here dot pets pets is this image button right here and now what we can do inside of this for loop is we can say local button cast the type to button instance and set that equal to the child child. So now when we say button.icon, we can actually see we're able to index all the children of the specific button. Now that might be really confusing for you if you're not even sure what types are. Really, you could ignore this or maybe you could try to learn from this, but I'm not going to go too in detail into this because it could definitely be really confusing. Either way, it's really not a big deal and it doesn't exactly matter. It just basically makes the auto completion a little bit better and easier to understand and work with. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to actually listen for the mouse enter event on the button and we're going to connect that to a brand new function. And what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to say bun.image and we're actually going to set that to the hovered icon image background and then for the icon we also want to adjust the image color to be the hovered icon color just like that now we can actually duplicate this code and instead of listening to the mouse enter we're actually going to listen to the mouse leave event and now we'll change it to the default icon image background and then also the default icon color just like that so now if we go into our game and we hover over any of these buns we can actually see that the background color is updated so is the icon color and everything else like that and it does look pretty good if we wanted to we could also adjust the title text color so we can say hovered icon color just like that default icon color just like that start it up and test it out and now we can see that whenever we hover over this we can see that the text is also changed as well and i think that looks pretty good one final thing that i want to do is actually update the clicks bun gui and the reason for that is because we're using a ui aspect ratio so what we actually need to do for the positioning of this is we also need to adjust the anchor point as well the reason that we need to adjust the anchor point is because if we change the view to a different device we can actually see that these appear a little bit higher up on the screen than they do normally because right now they appear directly at the bottom of the screen. So what we're actually going to do is adjust the positioning of this frame a little bit. So we're going to set the anchor point to one. And then for the position, we're actually going to set that to 0 0.985, just like that. And now if we go to test and we actually change the mobile view, we can see that the positioning of this frame is not changing at all. And they're staying exactly where they should be. So this is working perfectly. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we've now created the bunch GUI. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on. If you want to get notified, want to upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, with Patreon, if you guys like to support me, and you can access all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.